Hello everyone, my name is Kathan and today we'll be discussing the problem number spiral from the introductory problems of the CACS problem set. Let's begin. Alright, so let me read out the question for you. A number spiral is an infinite grid whose upper left corner has the number 1. And here are the first 5 layers of this spiral. So they are defined a spiral here, you can see. And our task is to find out the number in row Y and column X. Now I'm gonna deliberately choose here like row X and column Y. It's like nothing fancy here. I'm doing it because I want to keep the explanation simple. Okay, so we want to find out a number in a given a row X and a column Y. Okay, so I'm gonna de denote this axis with a column and this axis with rows. Fine. And our input uh, here this time contains firstly the number of tests. Right, so this is the first time we are encountering this test case input. After this, there are t lines, each containing integers, uh, y and x, but I'm going to call them x, y, okay? It uh, doesn't uh, change the question in any way if I call them x, y, because they will be asking uh, for a value in a given cell in all the test cases, fine? And for each test, print the number in a row x and column y. And constraints are given here, and uh, we will be having some input. So you can see here, they will ask for uh, row 2 and column 3. So row 2 means this is first row, this is second row, and column 3. 1, 2, 3. So that's why 8 will be outputted here. Then 1, 1 will be simply 1, fine. Then 4, 2. So first row, second row, third row, fourth row. And uh, here they want the second column. So second column means 15, right? Now one thing uh, you will have to observe here uh, that the number of test cases are 1, 5, okay? And uh, x, y can go anywhere from 1 to 1, 9. So 1, 9 is a very big number. So they can ask for, let's say, x equals to 1 e 9, y equals to 1 e 9. So in a way, they will ask you to consider a grid of 1 e 9 into 1 e 9. Uh, so what does it say? If you traverse the grid once, you will have to do these many number of operations, right? So 1 e 9 into 1 e 9, that means around 1 e 18 number of operations. And plus, there can be 10 power 5 test cases. So in the worst case, there will be 10 power 5 into 10 power 18 operations even if you uh, decide to traverse the grid at least once so this comes out to around 10 power 23 number of operations which you definitely cannot do in one second right so this is like clearly giving a hint this constraint you please figure out uh, some neat solution whether order of log n or log n means log 1 e 9 or something like log 1 e 23 or simply a constant time solution like the math trick in most cases, in questions like this, where there is like numbers and all grid involved, uh, there will be some neat math trick involved. So yeah, I mean, that's about the time complexity discussion, but uh, let's go to the iPad and try to understand this even more. All right, so before we move on to the observations and the approach to solve this problem, uh, let me clarify one more time on the time complexity part, because I guess this is the first time we are dealing with test case input. So it pays well uh, to spend some time here. Fine. So in the problem you can see that the number of test cases can be as high as 10 power 5, like 1 e 5. And uh, x, y values as well, uh, they can be as high as, like, they can be as high as uh, 10 power 9. Right. So the worst case, uh, you can be given an input where x is 10 power 9 and y is 10 power 9. So you can be dealing uh, with grids. You can be dealing with grids which are 1 e 9 into 1 e 9. So these are very large grids. Right. So what I said is, even if you traverse this grids once per test case, the total time you will end up taking will be 10 power 5 for each test case. And for every test case, even if you traverse the grid at least once, you will be doing 10 power 9 into 10 power 9. So this actually turns out to be 10 power 18 number of operations. So all in all total will be 10 power 23 number of operations. So this you can uh, not do in one second. In one second, you cannot do more than somewhere around 10 power 6, 7 sort of operations, right? So this is not going to work. So you'll have to come up with the smarter solution than traversing the grid uh, entirely. So the smarter solution in the sense, you either come up with the order of one solution or the order of log this 1e18 something. Like this is uh, expected time complexity per test case. That's what I talked about, right? So you'll have to come up with a smarter solution like this. Fine, there's one more uh, question for you, like, you know, uh, how to convert from this 10 powers to 2's power, right? I discussed it in a previous video or maybe a video before that. But yeah, so 
can you tell me like what is this log 1e18 in the comment section right now very quickly okay so just a hint 2 power 10 is nearly equal to 10 power 3 so yeah any which way the expected time complexity uh, per test case will be order of one that was the whole point all right let's try to make some observations from our spiral matrix first things first like we have already made it clear that x goes along the rows and uh, y will go along the columns right so uh, just a bit different from the question uh, what is given the question in question it is given yx but here i'm gonna consider xy but this doesn't change the equation at all fine so you can look at the matrix and you will quickly see that uh, there is one here fine then we have two three four then we have five to nine then we have ten to sixteen then we have seven to twenty five so these are you can say sort of spirals of our matrix uh, hence the name spiral matrix right let's just call these you can say spirals or layers right so let's come up with the terminology here let's call these as layers in the sense uh, this is layer 1 this is layer 2 layer 3 layer 4 layer 5 and then and if someone asks you a cell for example this 14 it will always lie on a layer right this 14 lies on a fourth layer this 21 lies on the fifth layer this 9 lies on the third layer this 2 lies on lies on the second layer right so like you will be asked uh, a cell in one of these layers fine uh, what else uh, can you make some more observation yes definitely you can see here uh, if someone asks you this 23 what is this 23 this 23 is actually 3 5 so how did you get this 23 you just subtracted you just subtracted 2 from 25 this was 3 you subtracted 2 from 25 fine okay what about this 21 what was 21? It was 5, 5, right? So you subtracted 4 from this 25. Or maybe you just added 4 to this 17. Fine. Let's take one more example here. For example, let's say this 7. The 7 lies on third layer, right? Third layer. This is 3, 3. So either you added 2 here or you subtracted 2 here. Let's take one more example. Let's say someone asked you about the 6. The 6 is what? It is at 3, 2. So basically, uh, this guy is also on third layer, right? This is on the third layer, you can see. How did you get this 6? You added plus 1, right? So this was 2 and you added 1 here. Fine. So what I'm trying to say here is, uh, whenever like you will be asked a cell, let's say this 12, it will lie on one of those layers, right? It will lie on one of those layers. And depending on, let's say this 12, and depending on whether x is you can say less than equals to y that is this portion right so in this portion x is less than equals to y or x is greater than y so if you want if you're confused what i can say is uh, let's just call it x can either lie on this portion when x is less than equals to y so this is you can say the vertical line of a spiral or you can say a layer or it can lie on this part so whenever someone will ask your target cell firstly it will be on one of these layers right it will be one of these layers and on that layer too it will either be the case that x is less than equals to y right in this case you can say 1 5 2 5 3 5 4 5 5 5 so it can be either x is less than equals to y that is on this vertical line this purple line or it will be on this horizontal line and uh, now that we know that uh, either uh, you will have to deal with this vertical lines or horizontal lines let's just uh, go step by step right case by case let's say someone is asking you to find a value on this vertical line you can say the vertical portion of a spiral so uh, let me just highlight those things so it will be either this right so 25 24 23 22 21 or you can say here 10 to 13 or this portion here right or this portion Right, or year one fine doesn't really matter but yeah let's say if someone asks you a value here now what do you see for example uh, here you can clearly see if it is you can say the y value is odd you have to subtract something from y square right you have to subtract something from y square right you can clearly see here this is what y is 5 so you have to subtract something from 25 y is 3 so you have to subtract something from 9 right what is that something actually if someone asks you this 3 3 you have to effectively subtract from 9 2 for example if someone asks you this 23 you have effectively subtract from this you can define to 525 what 
Someone is asking you 3, 5. So you have to subtract 2. Right. So it's very simple here uh, that you can see that uh, if y is odd, if y is odd, then what you have to do is your answer will be, uh, let me just not block my screen, uh, your answer will be y square, right, 25 minus x minus 1. Simple, right? So if someone asks you this 12, sorry, uh, I'm dealing with the case where y is odd. Someone asks you this 22, then it is simply 25 minus what? This was 4, right? So 25 minus 3, right? If someone asks you this 21, so it is what? 5, 5, right? So 25 minus x minus 1, 4. So 21. Let's take one more, I guess. Uh, this 3, right? Uh, not 3. Uh, let's take this one. 8. This is what? y square, right? y square minus 2 minus 1, which is 8. Right? Makes sense? Similarly, uh, what happens if y is even then? Let's see if y is even then what happens. We are talking about these cases. This case, this case. So what is this uh, 2? Uh, 2 maybe you can say 1 plus 1. Fine, no problem. But 10 you can definitely see, right? So it is what? 9 plus 1. Right? Similarly, like if this is 17 to 25, uh, you know that uh, like 17 to 25, then it's going to start from 26, right? So it's going to start 26 here only. 26 to whatever the numbers are, right? 26, 27, 28, 29, so on. So effectively, if y is even, you know uh, that you have to add something to what? y minus 1 square plus 1 and then something, right? So you have to add something. So here, if y is even, you have to add something to y minus 1 square plus 1 right so here you have to add something to 10 what is this 10 this is y minus 1 so this first 4 right y minus 1 builds th 3 so 3 square 9 plus 1 10 you have to add something so here to get this 11 you have to actually add just 1 right to get this 12 you have to add this was 3 4 so you have to add 2 right so effectively uh, what you have to add is here also x minus 1 so effectively the answer becomes y square minus 1 plus x right simple right so it's very simple if if y is odd then you have to subtract something from y square and what is that it is actually x minus one right and y is even you have to actually add something you actually have to add something to what y minus one square plus one y minus one square plus one you have to add and what is that thing you have to add you have to add x minus one so here you have to subtract x minus one here you have to add x plus one right so in simple words here you are subtracting x minus 1 and here you are adding x minus 1 right it's just the starting value here is y square the starting value here is y minus 1 square plus 1 that's why you are just seeing plus x simple like <laughs> there is no complicated thing here similarly let's deal with the horizontal thing and you will definitely find symmetry here you will be able to level with symmetry here you will see see your attention should immediately be drawn to this 4 and this 16 the 16 is 4 square this 4 is actually 2 square Right, so automatically it says uh, here if x is even or x is odd. Right, if x is even, if x is even, you are subtracting something from x square. You are subtracting something from x square. And what is that you are going to subtract? If it was here x minus 1, here it will be y minus 1. Simple. So here your answer will be from x square you are subtracting something right so from x square let's say to get this 14 let's say to get this 15 what will you subtract you will subtract y minus 1 right so from x square you are going to subtract y minus 1 right similarly similarly here in this case in odd case in odd case what is this uh, like what is the starting value that you have to add something to right in odd case you will have to add something right what is the starting value x minus 1 square plus 1 right so to x minus 1 square plus 1 you are going to add what of course y minus 1 right so it will be simply y the simple logic here you are going to add y minus 1 right and here you are going to subtract y minus 1 same logic so i mean uh, 
that's about this question i guess <laughs> it's done and dusted so depending on uh, whether you are on this portion or this portion this portion we will divide right so we will either take this branch or this branch right if you are on the vertical portion that is x is less than equals to y x is less than equals to y depending on what is the value of y either you subtract x minus 1 or add x minus 1 and here in this case depending on whether the value of x is even or odd if it is even you subtract y minus 1 right if it is odd you add uh, you add y minus 1 to the starting value what is the starting value this will be actually x minus 1 square right so simple i guess uh, what is the time complexity here like this question is done and dusted here right first split based on the vertical horizontal and then split based on uh, whatever the value of uh, you can say the reference cell is right so whether it is here even odd or even odd right so i mean uh, that's about this question the time complexity is simply order of one per test case and let's just go through the code part and we can wrap this video up all right so here's the code so first things first here we are taking the test case input we go through each of the test cases now, depending on whether we are on a vertical line or horizontal line we will make you can say will make the calculations so vertical line means the borders border cell is on top right for example if you are here this is your reference cell right so this is your reference cell so that's what i'm saying the border cell and if you are here your reference cell or border cell will be on a bottom left that's what i'm saying so here if this case y is even y is even your answer will be what y minus one square plus something right so plus x and uh, if it is odd then it will be y square minus x minus 1 similarly on the horizontal line values also i guess this we have already seen so for example if it is even you are going to subtract y minus 1 right and if it is odd you are going to add y to it simple and uh, add y to it means actually you are going to add y minus 1 to it but since the value is x minus whole square uh, plus 1 uh, it 1 1 gets cancelled out and finally you can just print the answer I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, that was that about this question and about the time complexity, it will be actually equal to order of t. Why? Because this thing doesn't consume more than uh, order of one time. This internal thing for each test case doesn't consume more than order of one time because it's just some calculation based on uh, where we are lying, whether horizontal, vertical, then what is the parity of x and y. Fine. And order of t means it will be order of uh, 1e5. Right, and space complexity is order of one. We are not consuming any extra space. And yeah, I guess uh, that's that about this video. So this was a bit of a pattern-based or pattern recognition-based question. I hope uh, you actually got something out of this video. If you did, uh, please write understood in the comments. If you have any doubts, uh, please let me know. And I'll see you in the next one.